Hi, my name is Annika Padilla. I am one of the four juniors from Lanai High School that are behind this food and culture documentary. We think that the Lanai community has a rich mixture of cultural recipes, and we would like everyone to know how important they are. Through sharing stories about food and culture, we hope that our community will continue to cook these dishes and pass them on to the next generations. Aloha, I'm Callie Hart. Since food is a big part of preserving cultures, it's scary to think that younger generations may slowly be losing their traditions. We use the community food assessment as one of our sources when researching. It provided valuable community feedback, like 17% of respondents don't know how to cook cultural food, while 64% couldn't access ingredients due to availability or cost. The survey provided evidence like this as to why younger generations on our island are not cooking cultural food. Aloha, my name is Evelyn Hara. This documentary shows the significance of cultural foods to Lanai's community and holds valuable stories told from Kapuna here on Lanai that we want younger generations to see. We then hope this will bond them to their culture and their ancestors. Hi, my name is Sananta Villa. We believe that foods of our culture make up a part of our identity. Together, my group and I came to the conclusion that we are slowly losing our culture. For this documentary, we chose three cultural groups to interview, Hawaiian, Japanese, and Chinese. By doing this documentary, we are hoping that this film will carry on from generation to generation and more people will be involved with their culture. Aloha, my name is Garrett Covello Hera. I live on Lanai. I uh, just wanted to share a little background on myself. I was born on Oahu in 1963 and I lived on Oahu until like 1970, 1972. Um, but the connection I feel between me and my cultural food is what was passed on from generation to generation from my you know, all my great grandparents down to my grandparents to my parents and to myself and you know just uh, the culture food that they always share, they bring out and share, it was always good and delicious and the connection I feel is, the connection I feel to this food is, is that everything that we ate came from the land. I would like to see sweet luau, lao lao, um, I would like to uh, see them make fresh poi from the, the taro root, you know, how they prepare it from start and and you know and even sitting in the stores they're pounding the poi and you know so i want to see that you know i want to see that because that's part of the, the culture the tradition how to made it yeah and nowadays we just get it in a bag you know it probably was probably made from a factory or you know prepared by a factory and and but yeah i would want to see you know like back in the old days like you, you make it like how it was done before fresh yeah like lomi lomi salmon um, how they make the lao lao, you know, even the opihi, want to see more opihi in the stores, you know, mixed with limu and, you know, so stuff like that, yeah, we just want to see it, you know, more popular in the stores. But it's a time, you know, it's beneficial for everyone because we automatically, we help one another, help one another, you know, it's all from the, from the heart, yeah, and it's part of the culture that we always there for each other you know and and for the time we start preparing doing the cooking and cleaning up so it's beneficial for for everyone for this whole community and I think that is important that that we keep it like that because it's a sense of belonging it's a community that we belong together and that's the what Hawaiian is the Hawaiian spirit is is always you know sharing your aloha aloha is always helping one another. So yeah, so it benefits our community and, and the families here on Lanai and it's very important. When I was little with my brother and my two sisters, we lived in Kaimoki and every so often we all jumped in the car with my mom and dad and we drive all the way up to Waihewa and that's where my grandpa lives, that's my mom's uh, dad and all her brothers and sisters and they all come together and they bring their 
Hawaiian dish and and you know one thing about the cultural food that it, it draws families together you know and and we just look forward to what family what they're cooking what they're making and and but the food is so good you know but it but when there's Hawaiian food it draws family together and it's like a celebration and you know we just enjoy eating the food and after that all the adults you know they my grandpa and my mom then they grab their ukuleles and they start playing their ukuleles and they start singing and and sometimes my aunties and my mom them they stand up and they dance hula and so it was just a enjoyable time and all those kids of course we we're just being kids outside getting in trouble you know but but it's a time of of bringing families together and just enjoying each other's company and of course you know they drink the brew you know and after a few it makes you a better singer <laughs> but it but it's you know I remember those good old days because it, it brought you know we always look forward to seeing our cousins our aunties and our uncles and and playing with our cousin but it it brought us together and um, and we just enjoy each other's company and and just to see our parents hear our parents and our relatives uncles and aunties sing you know and it's just you know celebrating part of your culture and you know so it was just a, a time of enjoyment you know really good so I was born in Osaka, Japan, and so my mom and my dad, both of us, are Japanese. So I'm a Japanese. When I eat the Japanese local food, you know, like um, the food is the mom used to cook, and then, so I think about my family and their friends, and then the time I spend the time with them. So I think that is just the food, but that's, um, reminds me of my family and then, um, friends. That is very important to me. Yeah. So, um, I know it's not easy to have uh, Japanese restaurants here. And uh, so when I think about the Japanese food, I want to get the um, Japanese cooking sake. <laughs> so I can cook more because the cooking sake is the main component of the Japanese food. And I thought about any other culture, food is, um, I thought about the um, people from Philippines, because there are many um, people from Philippines, so maybe Filipino food is good, I think. And then before, when we had a fish Friday, we could try so many, I and mean, they are vendors, yeah? So we could try new Filipino food, and I really enjoy it. So I think just, how I feel about my cultural food, I think the Filipino food is good for the people here on Long Island, I think. Remember my mom used to be, I mean, she had a problem about health issue, about diabetic. She was diabetic and then she treat, She had a treatment. But um, when she changed her diet and the really local Japanese food, like a steamed vegetable, boiled vegetable, and the rest meat, and actually that she uh, became healthy. So I think, you know, some people who is I mean, struggling with the, um, maybe diabetes or something, maybe some Japanese food is don't use the, so much oil and then eat more vegetable and tofu, maybe that is healthy food for the people. I explained to you when we made a sushi rice, like a vinegar, uh, vinegar rice, um, you know, when my mom made a sushi, you know, we have to, you know, use the pan to cook off the rice. So sometimes we complain, so mom, hurry up, I'm tired, yeah, so like, those are nice memories. And then, um, um, Japanese food, I mean, we have a really special, um, traditional meal, meal for the New Year, so the Osechi Yori, so all different kind of food, and each one of them has a meaning. But since that is the, so many food and that's for the family, because um, when I was a child, they didn't cook for the three days, like New Year Day, second, third. So they cook a lot of food. So um, maybe December 30th, the two days before the New Year's, my mom and auntie, everybody start cooking. Then, um, you know, helping them see the making the special food. 
So when I became a winner with the 20, the mom was not there, so I tried to make my own. That's like a tr family transition. Uh, so that was nice when I tried to make. And the other one is when we family, when our family gathered together, we made a pound of mochi, you know, that New Year's. So um, because when I was a child, um, most of the companies and the store were closed, maybe the five days um, before and after New Year's. So uncles pound the mochi and the auntie and the us, the cousins roll the mochi and we use the um, sweet beans or like a shoyu and all different kind of taste and we ate it. So that's the best part, but that is nice memory to think about New Year. It's really special for Japanese people. My dad, mother is pure Chinese, which I was brought up with that family back on Oahu. And he's also part Filipino. And my mother is f pure Filipino. The connection, I feel, I believe that when eating your own ethnic foods, it strengthens your proudness to be part of that race. While I'm preparing and cooking those dishes binds you to your country also. And if it's a family recipe, that should connect you directly to your historical family lineage. Well, they have some of them available, but I'd still like to see the char siu bao, also known as the manapua, pork hash, half moon, spring rolls, but I'd like to see those freshly made here on Lanai. These are the most popular dishes, Chinese dishes, most popular throughout the world. And these usually you can purchase to one's own individual hungerness that makes it that much nicer. I think having the options of a variety of different types of food can take you on a journey of things, a journey, a journey guided by your own individual creative taste buds. My popo, who is my grandmother, at one time was my best friend. She always, she always used to take me to Chinatown to buy ingredients sold by Chinese merchants in the back of the store selling ingredients not passed by USDA. So I think that was very kind of special and unique. We'd like to say a special thank you to Uncle Garrett for inviting us into his home to share both his knowledge and food with us. Watching him prepare the lao la helped us gain a better understanding of the time and dedication that goes into making cultural foods. While time is a factor that prevents many people from making cultural foods, the stories and benefits he shared with us prove that it's worth our while. When making the maki sushi with Auntie Kazumi, we got to experience the way that she would make this cultural recipe with her family. We more than enjoyed seeing the process of making the sushi and also getting to try the final product. We want to thank Auntie Kazumi for letting us cook with her and for letting us listen to the stories she chose to share with us. I just want to give a big thank you to Uncle Russell for contributing into our food and culture project. I really enjoyed watching the whole process of the Chinese dish, Dalsi ribs, being made. Since I am more surrounded by my Filipino culture, I am proud to have learned about new cultural dishes. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the different cultures on the Na'i. We hope that you enjoyed seeing how these dishes are prepared and hearing the stories from our amazing interviewees.